Sometimes you have to take some time and enjoy the finer things in life. This video is not one of those times. When talking about dumb horror movie monsters, you've got to enjoy the less fine things, and that's okay. Better than okay, actually. Schlock and cheese and poorly thought out plots are just part of the fun. You can't have the good without the bad, and sometimes the bad is so bad that it's good. Maybe not always, but hey, at least if it's real bad, you can just make fun of it, which is what we'll do today. That's right, some of the dumbest stuff of all time originates from the money being thrown at half-baked ideas with little to no regard for quality. It's time for some real zero IQ monsters. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes, or you could say Max Wren. Today is part of Halloween week. That's right, we've got a full week of Halloween content for you. We'll see if I can throw in a couple costumes. If you know who I am, from where, let me know in the comments. Tell me how beautifully bad my costume is. It's perfect. And today, we're gonna talk about the top five dumbest horror movie monsters. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more ludicrous lambasting. Wicked, let's get to it. Coming at number five, we've got The House from Truth or Dare. The 2017 Truth or Dare, not the Bloomhouse one. My word, this is a silly, silly movie. Nothing gets explained ever. Nobody has real motivations, and the tagline is atrocious. Not only is it atrocious, but it keeps showing up in the movie and is always treated as a grave and serious thing, but I'll get to that in a second. So the plot here is a bunch of 20-somethings who don't actually like each other are invited to spend a weekend at a creepy old house. Their friends set up the whole thing so we could blog about it or something, and nobody really brings any supplies save for a bag of meat and some booze. It's revealed that another group of 20-somethings played a game of truth or dare here decades ago, and they all all died except for one. So of course our heroic squad of nobodies decides to play truth or dare as well. Immediately after starting they start getting inappropriate and dangerous dares that nobody wrote. So guess what? The house is giving them the dares. And why? Well, no, nobody knows, and it's never adequately explained, or even really partially explained. The house is just a bad truth or dare house. And also, it alternates from writing things down to whispering to folks, to playing things on an old TV, to calling them on the phone, to ringing the clock, the grandfather clock. You know, you, you just think that they would just leave the house, you know, not play the game, avoid disaster. Well, as it turns out, and here's the tagline, do the dare, or the dare does you. I told you this was dumb. God, this movie is something else. So the house then compels everyone to do their dares or speak their truth lest they die in horrible fashion. One girl refuses to admit she has a painkiller problem, so the house literally yeets her out the front door, causing her to die from hitting the ground, I guess? There's like something stuck in her after that, but it's not apparent what. Oh, and once they leave, the house starts contacting them remotely, so you gotta finish the game, you know, for, for reasons. Oh boy. Coming in at number four, we've got Shark to Put from Sharktopus. Is it really fair to put something like this on a list of dumb horror movie monsters? I mean, probably. I don't see anyone else telling me that I can't use purposefully schlocky ideas. Sci-fi is well known for their insane B-movie antics over the years, so it comes as no surprise that this is a ridiculous, over-the-top, and totally dumb shark-octopus hybrid tossed around in a movie. Here's the plot. Don't expect anything groundbreaking. A geneticist and his daughter are hired to create a shark-octopus hybrid to then be used as a weapon by the US Navy. No action accidents here, no shark to push surprises. Two people are literally hired to create a killer fish with tentacles and hope it goes alright. And surprise! It doesn't go all right. The electromagnetic pulse device used to control the beast is quickly discarded by Sharktopus, who is then free to go on a killing spree the likes of which we have never seen before. It kills tourists, it kills locals, it kills fishermen. It is a true monster. Thankfully, there's a computer chip in its brain somewhere that can be overridden with a device connected to a geneticist's daughter's computer. If only everything in life were that simple. Or maybe if you just shot it a bunch of times with guns. You know, I think that would work too. All in all, it's a wholly ridiculous concept backed up by a lot of silly plot points and expertly rounded out with a blow it up and walk away like nothing happened type ending. I wish it was my job to make dumb monster movies like this. Can you imagine how fun that would be? Someday. Coming in number three, we've got Tabanga from From Hell It Came. So it turns out that Yoda was actually in charge of naming monster movies for a short stint in the late 50s. Mmm, From Hell It Came. 
Yes! Okay, so now that I've made that joke, look at this picture of the monster and forget that I ever did a Yoda impression. Like, what the hell is this thing? A man, a tree, one of those terrifying tree faces that people like to attach to their local oak? Good lord. If the sight of this monster isn't enough for you, you should also know why it exists. Way, way back in the day, a prince was wrongfully convicted of killing a chief. Put to death by ceremonial dagger, he's stabbed and then tossed in a hollow tree trunk. And then, guess what happens? He comes back as a tree person with the knife still lodged in there. Who could have predicted that? Apparently this costume was so shoddily built, it cut the actor inside and tore at the legs of the costume, partially showing off some very untree-like pants. Being a crazed magical monster, nobody seems to be able to kill it. Trapping it doesn't work and neither does burning. But thankfully, somebody has the bright idea of shooting the knife. A sneaky sniper manages to hit the knife, which is then driven through the monster's heart. The end. Monsters from the 50s were special. Coming in number two, we've got Herschel from Blood Freak. Here is another wicked tagline, a Dracula on drugs. Sounds like a pretty fun Halloween party if you ask me, but here's the thing. This movie is an anti-drug, quasi-educational film, sort of. Essentially, the message they're trying to get across here is, if you smoke pot, you will turn into a monster and die. Pretty cut and dry, don't you think? The way they get to this message is incredible, though. It's so, so very dumb, and I love it. So we meet a Vietnam vet named Herschel who is riding down the highway on his motorcycle. On this trip, he meets a young girl named Angel. Very symbolic. She takes him back to her place where her sister and their friends are smoking the devil's lettuce. Herschel eventually breaks down and takes a toke of that sweet, sweet Satan's spinach, and guess what? He's addicted for life now. So addicted that he eats an experimental turkey in exchange for more kush. Like the whole turkey in one sitting. It causes him to have an apparently deadly seizure so the scientist ditches body in the woods. But it turns out he's not dead just transforming into a monster. A man with a turkey head who is now addicted to the blood of marijuana addicts instead of marijuana. If only he knew that Mary Jane was a gateway drug. He could have avoided eating an entire experimental turkey in one sitting and becoming a blood crazed monster. Ah, but such is life. Anyone who could come up with such a beautifully stupid anti-drug message packed into a monster movie is all right in my books, especially when they make a paper mache turkey head to really drive the point home. And finally, at number one, we've got the birds from Bird I can't think of this movie and not laugh, can you? It is the perfect dumb movie. Every shot, every line delivery, every clumsily copy-pasted bird, it's a masterpiece of errors and therefore is beyond reproach. Hitchcock already made a movie where a bunch of birds attack a sleepy seaside town where an attractive couple recently met, so of course somebody had to try to come back and top it. But instead of carefully planning each shot or getting real birds or harassing Tippi Hedren, James Nguyen said, it and slapped a bunch of transparent bird gifts over some wide shots. Hell yeah, James. The world is going to hell and it's all our fault. But also, the birds, you know, because they've descended upon us and are vomiting and pooping acid over everything and they also explode. Because... The, the environment? Something about being better to our planet. We never really get an answer because a mountain lion scares off the token environmentalist. So how do you feel after watching that? A little smarter, maybe? Possibly a little dumber? Either way, it's good to know that some things never change. There will always be dumb horror movies and dumb horror movie monsters. And that is a good thing. So what'd you think of the list? Have you seen any of these flicks? All of them? What's the dumbest movie monster out there? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more malicious ones from the top five SCP locations you should never visit, part three. August Brown says, fun fact, up until I was 10 or 11, I thought Canada was a fictional place. Think Atlantis. No, I mean, you were right. Canada isn't real. I'm not real. Wake up. You've been in a coma for 10 years. Don't believe their lies. Dark Wolf Red Soul says, I don't know why, but I can never really think of a movie as a horror movie if the killer slash monster turns out to be human. In my mind, that will always be a thriller. I understand the reasons people still call it horror, and believe me, I've had this conversation a lot of times, but in my heart, I just can't feel it. Hold on, does that mean you consider Halloween to be a thriller? Texas Chainsaw? Or like any slasher? That's nuts. Nicholas Cosmetis says, Can you do a newest SCP Creatures video? Oh, you're in luck. We got five parts ready to roll. Go check them out. Michiru Morales 999 as Tazka says, I'm curious if the IKEA SCP has Swedish meatballs. 
You know they do. And they restock automatically with every day-night cycle. The folks there are probably a little tired of them by now, but hey, sustenance is sustenance. And Tom Never Sleeps says you guys should do a top five scary Lucy facts. I first read that as top five scary Lucy farts and I was really weirded out. But thankfully, I reread it and was relieved. However, nobody actually knows anything about Lucy because she's forever a mystery. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I don some chain mail and go strolling through an open field during a thunderstorm, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more hilarious horror. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Sometimes, wow, 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 oh boy, let's uh, let's forget that ever happened. So of course, ah, what is my voice today, Chris? Ah. And it also alternated from waiting through the So the house then compels everyone to do their dares or speak their truths, truths. The electromagnetic pulse device used to control the beast is quickly discarded by shock to shock to puss. All in all, a wholly ridiculous concept backed up by a lot of little. Oh, there's that one again. Sometimes, wow! So, of course, sometimes, wow! So, of course, wow! What is my voice today? Wow! Sometimes, so, of course.